made the bigger sacrifice in the MCU? Was it Iron Man, AKA Tony Stark, or was it Loki? That's what we're gonna be discussing here in today's video. We'll be weighing their works, their words, and some of their crimes that ultimately led them to take some ridiculous actions that saved a ton of people. Now, of course, if it's your first time coming to the channel here, welcome to Keep It A Comic, I'm Goofy Rexy. Now, as it pertains to Iron Man, and they say sacrifices are what makes a hero, right? And in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, there are a lot of heroes who made incredible sacrifices, particularly the OG Avengers in Infinity War and Avengers Endgame. Now, we see where Hawkeye becomes Ronin and dedicated his life to unveiling criminals, although that's probably not the right kind of sacrifice that we're looking for. He was also the only one willing to sacrifice his life to test run the time traveling tech. Now, what about Oak sacrificing his arm or what could have possibly taken his life just so that everyone gets returned safely? We have Captain America who goes back in time to return the stones, even though it would be difficult. And don't get me started on Natasha sacrificing her life just so that Clint could get the soul stone. And then there's Thor sacrificing his brother and best friend and jumping in front of a star. Yeah, all of those sacrifices would have been mute if it wasn't for the main man, Tony Stark. And if he hadn't given his life to destroy Thanos' forces. But that's not the first time that Tony given all that he had to save the world and the people that he loves. Starting from way back in Iron Man 1, Tony's whole thing was about atonement. The dude was a warmonger, someone who promoted war and profited off of it, until he got introduced to the dangers of his own weapons and decided to do a 180. Now suddenly, the billionaire playboy philanthropist with a penchant for pizzas and supermodels didn't care about making weapons anymore. He decided to build a suit of armor instead to change the world. Now, if you ask me, the suits are also more of a fashion statement, just like our new Keeping a Comment merch that you'll see linked right down in our description of the video. So if you want to look as fly as Iron Man and as noticeable as Loki, you have to try out some of this Keeping a Comment merch. They're super comfortable, fashionable, and affordable. All right, now back to Iron Man. The creation of the Iron Man suit was when Tony's sacrifice really began. Stark Industries had always been a weapons magnet, so he sacrificed the state of his company by making that shift. But did it pay off? He developed clean, sustainable energy, or at least a version of it via the arc reactor, but it wasn't enough. In Iron Man 2, Tony was plagued with a difficult disease, and it looks like his days were numbered. He starts to sacrifice the state of his friendships and romantic relationships until he gets a wake-up call and perfects his arc reactor technology. But that doesn't really compare to what Tony did in the Avengers movie. I mean, it's already bad enough that he's putting himself in harm's way to face gods and alien warriors. When Tony saw that a nuke was heading straight for New York City, what did he do? He redirected the nuke into the portal, knowing fully well that he might not make it back. Tony was willing to put his life on the line to save New York. And in Iron Man 3, he did the same thing again. He put his life on the line to save America from a devastating terrorist. Not only did he lose his Malibu beach house, which was where he did most of his inventing in the first place, he lost his cars, his robots, and his suits during his fight. And while this was all happening, Tony was having an existential crisis and dealing with panic attack. He was coming to terms with the fact that that humans were not alone, that there were things like aliens and other dimensions. And when Age of Ultron came along, well, let's just say that this was when Tony's anxiety got pushed to the max when he saw the world get destroyed and the Avengers defeated. This prompted him to create Ultron, and we all know how that turned out. Tony watched as his creation decimated half of Sokovia and almost destroyed the world. A lot of people were rendered homeless, properties destroyed, and lives were lost, and it was kind of Iron Man's fault. So Tony took all that guilt into Civil War and decided the Avengers needed oversight, whereas Captain America saw things differently and could sense the work of Zemo and that something else was amiss. Tony, blinded by grief and the realization that Bucky killed his parents, went on an all-out brawl with Captain America and Bucky, and by doing so, he split up the Avengers. Still, Tony tried to keep things together. He mentored Spider-Man through the events of Homecoming, moved the Avengers upstate, and even lost a ton of equipment to the Vulture's escapades. I still, my man Tony didn't hesitate when Thanos sent Ebony Maw. After after rescuing Doctor Strange, he took the alien ship straight to Titan, joined up with the Guardians, and they had an intense battle with Thanos. At some point, he had a moon dropped on top of him. He even got stabbed, and then he had to watch almost everyone disappear, and he was stuck in space for what seemed like weeks. He 
lost weight and got sick to the point that he couldn't stand. However, within the five years after the blip, he managed to get his life together. He started a family with Pepper and had Morgan. But when the events of Endgame came through, Tony made his final ultimate sacrifice. And now to me, that's the biggest sacrifice that he made, right? He used all the Infinity Stones, knowing that he was not going to survive, leaving behind his wife and child, his legacy, and everything that he worked so hard for over all these years so that the universe could have a chance. And then on the other hand, we have Loki. He was born Prince of the Frost Giants of the Odenheim, but he got adopted by Odin. And we already explained why Loki was always meant to rule in another video. We'll probably get into that a little bit later. Loki joins the Asgard family and learns magic, but he is mostly ostracized because he is forced to live in the shadow of his brother Thor. It sets him down a villainous path where he allies with Thanos and steals the Tesseract and tries to take over Earth with the Shatari. Thankfully, his plan is foiled by the Avengers, and it is at this point that we have two sacred timeline Lokis, the main time my Loki and the Loki who gets captured by the TVA. The main time my Loki lives out the entirety of Loki's story where he dies at the hand of Thanos pretty gruesomely. Due to set time heist, Loki from the first Avengers movie steals the Tesseract and becomes a variant, causing a branching in the timeline. So he gets captured by the TVA and he meets up with Mobius and gets sent down another path. Now in season one of the Loki series, Loki bears most of his original characteristics of the Avengers Loki. The hubris, the sense of entitlement and self-absorption, but, but everything kind of changes when he meets Mobius. My man gets kicked in the nuts multiple times by Sif and then he falls in love with Sylvie, his female counterpart and he also is associated with other variants of himself at the end of time. When he met He Who Remains and found out the truth about the TVA and the sacred timeline, Loki realized that he didn't want the throne. Loki saw that he would rather have the safety of the people that he cared about. For the first time in history, Loki started to look beyond himself and started to look towards others. And that's when he truly started to make sacrifices. Now, first of the sacrifice was the life he could have had with Sylvie if he had joined her in ending He Who Remains. But he could sense the threat of He Who Remains, so he stood up against Sylvie and by doing so, he lost out on whatever they could have spent. He lost out on whatever time they could have spent together. Then he begins to time slip and his consciousness tossed around time. He sees the past as well as the future of the TVA. He meets Ouroboros and Victor Timely and works closely with them to save the TVA and restore the loom. But things don't go as planned because during their first attempt at fixing the loom, Victor Timely gets spaghettified and the loom explodes, destroying the TVA and sending all its workers to different timelines. Now, Loki does his best to get the team together so that they can fix the loom, but it doesn't work out due to the loom exploding. It destroys all accompanying timelines and everyone in it. But Loki finally learns to control his time slipping and decides to go back to the point before the loom explodes. But despite everything he tries, despite everything he does, the loom always gets destroyed. He just doesn't have enough knowledge. And this, of course, brings us to what is Loki's the biggest sacrifice in the MCU. One that probably blows the competition wide open. To learn everything he could about the loom and the quantum time mechanics, Loki had to spend centuries learning. Not months, not years, not weeks, centuries. I mean, listen, I know my man's an Asgardian and everything, and that they get stronger with time, but it's still a huge sacrifice for someone to spend centuries learning how he can fix the loom. That's a dedication like no other in the MCU. And from the way that he tells Victor Tommy not to drop the multiplier or how he knew that buttons were a little sticky, it means that even with all of his knowledge, the whole endeavor probably went wrong a couple more times, but Loki kept at it. He kept working. He kept giving it his all until finally, meaning all this man's effort for centuries all amounted to nothing? Now, can we take a moment to acknowledge how messed up that is? My man spent centuries learning everything he could, and it was all ultimately for nothing. Or was it? So Loki went back to the past once again to meet up with He Who Remains. And after having several one versus one battles against Sylvie, Loki finally had a good conversation with He Who Remains. And he tells him that it's all been a part of his plan to get Loki to sit on his throne. But Loki refuses to go back, and he destroys the loom with his own hands, and he serves as a focal point for uniting the timeline with his power now as a god of stories, where he serves as a conduit for the multiverse, making the ultimate sacrifice for the safety of everyone. While everyone gets to go on living, he gets to sit back and give the multiverse a chance to exist, saving everyone, but sort of imprisoning himself for all time, always. But the question still remains, now that we've laid out all the sacrifices for both of these men, Iron Man and Loki, who do you think sacrificed the most? With Iron Man's greatest sacrifice being the blipping of Thanos' forces while losing his life, 
life and Loki's sacrifice being the centuries he spent and the fact that he has to be the overseer of the multiverse. I mean, Iron Man made more sacrifices than we can mention and he did his best to keep the world safe. But in the end, it's all about perspective and scale. Tony's sacrifice was mainly for the safety of one universe, but Loki's sacrifice was a safety for all universes. Now, they both had a difficult life. They both saw the people they love disappear before their eyes and they both left their families behind. But if pressed, I gotta say I gotta give the edge to Loki. His sacrifice benefits the most people and his spending centuries learning about the loom, never faulting, never wavering shows just how much Loki was willing to sacrifice. So yeah, in the end, both characters gave their lives and their being to save the world or worlds. But in the end, Loki wins this one. Sorry, Iron Man. So let me know what you think. Who do you think made the bigger sacrifice here in the MCU? Was it Iron Man? Was it Loki? And if you haven't done this already, consider hitting that like button. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't done that already as well. Check out our links that are down below in the description where you can follow us on social media. And as always, guys, thanks so much for kicking it. We'll keep it a comic.